welcome to our earnings call today before we get into the earnings comments and our strategy going forward i am very pleased to tell you that true caps board has approved an equity infusion of rupees 1.68 billion in a combination of warrants and compulsory convertible debentures to zeer global opportunities fund and nova global opportunities fund along with a few existing investors of the company this equity infusion will bolster our net worth to over 4 billion rupees and bring down our leverage to 1.2x from an already low 2x this will en- enable continued robust growth in aum especially with our existing and potentially new co lending partners which should hopefully enhance earnings growth in a faster and swifter manner now coming to our quarterly earnings results in the second fiscal quarter of 2024 we reported 60% quarter on quarter growth in pre tax profits to 27 million rupees driven by robust growth in disbursements of 2.95 billion up from 2.68 billion in the previous quarter and 1.55 billion a year ago for the first 6 months of the year disbursements have been 5.62 billion up from 3.19 billion a year ago representing increasing scale and volume growth driven by expansion of our distribution network coupled with addition of co lending partners to illustrate on both these important points further related to capital allocation and distribution first on capital allocation we have expanded lending as a service partnerships from one lender a year ago to five lenders today which include hdfc bank bcb bank Shivalik Small Finance Bank, Ugro Capital and Central Bank of India. This addition of partners has enabled us to disperse 5.62 billion in the first 6 months of the year of which these partners have contributed approximately 3 billion. That means 2.62 billion of disbursements has happened through our own resources for which we have raised net debt of only 0.33 billion. This goes to show that with 0.33 billion of net debt raised in the first half of fiscal 24 we were able to grow disbursements by 5.62 billion and our aum by 1.9 billion which essentially is the difference of 7 of 7.7 billion at the end of september minus the aum on march 31st of 5.81 billion the benefits of this accretion should start reflecting in numbers in the back half of this fiscal and more so in fiscal 25 lastly due to this strategy adopted on capital efficiency from august 2021 our leverage continues to remain low at 2x versus 1.9x in the previous quarter secondly on distribution with the expansion of lending as a service partnerships TrueCap will need to cater to a larger volume of disbursements which explains the branch expansion strategy that we embarked on over 18 months ago. Our distribution footprint has gone up by 63 branches in the last one year to 122 branches at the end of September 2023. The majority of these branch openings have been in tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4 towns which today represent almost 50% of our branch network. Our footprint today covers Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Delhi, NCR, Goa, and Punjab, and further branch additions will be in these states only. Given that the majority of these co-lending partnerships are driven by the MSME Gold Loan product, over 76% of our quarterly disbursements were driven by MSME Gold Loans. Our track record in the Gold Back product has been fairly resilient. with over 18 and a half billion of cumulative disbursements done in the last 3 and a half years with only 53 million being taken into auction where where we have recovered more than 109% of principal plus interest and given money back to the customer gross npas in this product are a mere 5 basis points in the collateral free msme business loan product we have dispersed 0.72 billion in the quarter up from 0.55 billion in the previous quarter cumulatively we have dispersed 5.67 billion in msme business loans with our gross npas in that product being 2.8% 
assets on the management at the end of September 2023 was 7.8 billion, up from 6.6 billion in June 2023, and up 72% over the last one year. The product composition of our total on and off balance sheet AUM today is 65% in gold loans, 34% in MSME business loans, and 1% in loan against property and personal loans, which are in runoff mode. Active customer count, which was 23,415 in September 2021 and 57,115 in September 2022, is up to almost 81,000 customers today. Gross NPAs were flat quarter over quarter at 1.1% versus 2.8% a year ago. This improvement year over year has been driven by a relentless focus on resolving legacy lap and personal loans, which last year contributed to almost 60% of our total gross NPAs. Today, only 11% of our NPAs come from legacy lap and personal loans, which are also in the process of being resolved by the end of this fiscal year. Collection efficiency in the gold loan product is well north of 200% due to prepayment, repayment, plot closures, etc. While for the business loan product, collection efficiency has ranged from 92 to 95% since September 2022. On the net interest margin, which came in at set, which came in at 5.5%, still lower than our desired range of 8%, a few things have happened. One is due to the rate hikes being passed on to us from June 2022 onwards, we have seen margin compression. Secondly, incremental funding costs that had come down in the June 2023 quarter has been flat since then, which resulted in lack of improvement in the NIM in the September quarter. To improve NIM going forward, the company is writing more business with lending as a service partners, which gets funded at a fixed hurdle rate to the partner. Coming on to cost to income, which we are looking to improve through, through productivity and tech enhancements, we dispersed almost 40,200 loans in the September quarter versus 35,000 loans in fiscal 1Q and 22,600 loans in September 2022. This means we have averaged close to 442 loans made per working day in, this, in the previous quarter versus 380 loans in the June 2023 quarter and 248 loans a year ago. Almost 48% of our branches have broken even, and we expect this number to go up to 65 plus percent in the current fiscal. More than 37% of our branches have an AUM in excess of 40 million rupees, and we are now very keenly focused on substantially improving branch productivity, which is measured in loans per day, per branch, per person, and the resulting profitability it brings to the business. As mentioned on the prior call, the pace of increase in adding new branches will be slower for the rest of fiscal 24, and OPEX as a percentage of AUM should decline in the last quarter of this fiscal and in fiscal 25. Furthermore, with several other initiatives being undertaken by the company to substantially enhance business volume through tech enhancement, our cost to income should start to see material improvement in fiscal 25. In conclusion, we want to wish everyone a very happy Diwali and now open the call for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take the first question from the line of Kripesh Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, yes, Mr. Kupesh. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for giving the opportunity. Uh, so my question was about the gold loan. So
So gold loan has increased over 60 percent of our loan book. So and also about the co lending, is it the big part of our book going ahead? And uh, why there are lower margins and the uh, uh, growth is low for the company overall? So on gold loans, that's 65 percent of the total AUM, which includes the on plus the off balance sheet. Uh, in terms of uh, co lending, co lending today in in terms of writing business has gone up to about 39 percent of total AUM, and this number will go up to about between 42 to 45 percent uh, by March 2025. uh i don't think growth has slowed down growth has actually been fairly uh, resilient we are being selective about the kind of business that we want to write so for example uh you know in the months of september and october gold traditionally becomes more competitive because of diwali uh in those times and in times when gold prices go up uh, uh in a fairly robust manner we get uh, somewhat cautious we don't want to compete at pricing that is not sustainable for the long run number one number two in terms of gold prices going up while that's good for the business that can be very good for lending as well we tend to be a little more cautious on those times because any kind of exogenous shocks which can lead to a, a swift decline in gold prices will not be good for uh, the business and more importantly not good for customers so we tend to be uh, more cautious on those times due to which september and october have been a little slower than prior months but that's perfectly fine in the unsecured business loan category as well we have made the product much simpler but at the same time the selection criteria is fairly onerous so it's better to write good business maybe at a slightly lower yield uh, than to write uh, more voluminous business at a higher yield where the risk of delinquencies and the risk of provisioning increases at a later stage Okay, so uh, going ahead, uh, what would be the profitability target of the company? So we would not live, like to give any formal guidance in terms of profitability, but the idea is to first obviously strive towards getting to a two percent ROA, and then further up from there. Uh, I think in the last year to year and a half, our profitability has been uh, slightly lower due to the branch expansion that has happened. So as I mentioned in the opening comments as well, we have added uh, more than 65 branches in the last one year. In fact, 31 of those branches came in the June quarter itself. So there's a capex and there's a capex, a capex and opex cost associated with starting those branches. It's also important to remember that when you open the branches, the expense comes first and the revenue comes later. So there's a tail effect that you that there will be a catch up on the revenue and the earning side as well. uh these branches are now breaking even in a shorter time frame because of co lending relationships so uh, as more than 48% of our branches are broken even which we've guided to about 65% will break even by the back half of the year you should see a good jump in profitability going forward but we would not like to give a formal guidance on the profit number oh, okay sure so and uh, the last question is about uh, uh, recently we have issued a warrant over here and uh, we have done multiple rounds for this fundraising so what is the reason and where would be this utilized and is, are we expecting more such fundraising rounds going ahead so i don't know whether multiple rounds so there's an equity uh, infusion that has been approved by the board yesterday which is on a combination of warrants and uh, ccds compulsory convertible debentures so uh, about just under 60 crores is expected by the end of december with the balance coming in which is almost about 109 crores which will come in over the course of the next uh, 18 months so this equity infusion is a big uh, uh, boost to our net worth also it will help us expand business substantially uh, and keep leverage very low so you know the two choices always in front of management on the board is do you want to increase leverage take it up to 3 to 4x uh and wait to raise equity at a later stage or do you want to equitize the business further run at lower leverage especially because you're doing a good amount of business with co-lending partners we chose the latter where we believe that keeping leverage low is fairly important uh, for an nbfc of our size uh number 2 increasing the net worth will help us expand these co-lending relationships further and potentially new co-lending relationships also because any partner would look at you in terms of how big a company's net worth is and how safe a company is uh, uh to to do business with because 80% of the capital that is being contributed is by them uh in terms of any future fundraisers i mean we have this fundraise for now that we just announced yesterday so anything in the future is something that we would look in the future for on which i would not be able to comment right now okay got it it was very Thank you so much sir yeah thank you
Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants, if you wish to join the question queue, you may please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Pranav, an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Sir Pranav, your line is in the talk mode. So Hello. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I had a couple of questions. The first one is uh, there have been recent news uh, talking about contractionary trajectory in the monetary policy. So, uh, which will lead to build up of risk in the NBFC. How do you think this will impact us and the whole NBFC sector as a whole? Pranav, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear your question clearly. Can you speak a little louder, please? Hello, am I audible now? Yes. Yeah, so there have been recent news talking about contractionary trajectory in monetary policy, which will lead to build up of risk in NBFC. So, how do you think this will, this will impact us and the NBFC sector as a whole? Sorry, I'm still not understanding your question clearly. There have been talks about contractory trajectory in the yeah. monetary policy. Okay, what do you mean by that? Sorry, I'm, I'm still a little unclear. So, uh, there have been a hike in interest rates by RBI. Yeah. So, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. How so will it impact us? Yeah, so, I mean, hikes in interest rates over the course of the last one year when the RBI raised by 250 basis points has impacted us on the net interest margin primarily, and that's why you've seen a contraction uh, from 7.5% to about 5.5% for us. So it has clearly impacted us uh, very very directly. Um, we are expecting this impact to dissipate, which means that it should reduce going forward. Uh, so our net interest margin should improve going forward. The reason for that is because in the previous two policy meetings, the RBI has actually not raised the rates. And um, we feel, I mean, it's, more of, uh, we feel that hopefully that should be the case going forward as well, where there should not there would not be any more uh, further rate hikes. But obviously that depends on the inflation trajectory and infl and depends on a lot of other exogenous factors like the Fed, etc. Um, but for us on the name, but but for us on the name, a few things are happening. One is on the funding side. Um, Hopefully, with the equity announcement as well, we're looking to see how we can reduce our cost of funds on the incremental borrowing that we are taking from banks. Um, so whatever we are borrowing incrementally, hopefully that should come to us at a lower rate relative to what we borrowed in the past, number one. Number two is when we are funding more of the business through co-lending partnerships, that funding happens at a fixed rate to the partner. So both these uh, together should help in mitigating NIM compression going forward and it should help us to improve our NIM profile over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. Okay. Understood. Understood. So the next question I have is how do we compete against our uh, other NDSCs and other peers in the sector? Because may, uh, many other peers are also following the same, similar trends. Like they are also entering into gold, gold lending, etc. So how do we uh, strategize to compete against them? Sure. So, you know, this is a question that almost everyone asks. Firstly, uh, you know, if there was no competition in the space, then either there's something not correct in the space because of which there's no competition. India is a very big market and rightfully so, there is competition. Uh, what I can't speak for other NBFCs or, uh, you know, uh, other financial institutions, but for ourselves, what we do is we choose the pockets that we really want to compete in. So, for instance, when we decided we wanted to be in the gold-backed business loan product, we chose the states that we wanted to be in and very carefully calibrated where in those states we wanted to be in based on the demand for the products. So uh, the states that we spelled out, which are Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, Goa, etc., were the states that we chose. We decided not to go down south because it was uh, uh, more competitive than we wanted it to be. And uh, in these states, then we selected where we wanted to have our branches. So almost 84% of our branches are in tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 town. We feel we have no differentiating factor being in a tier 1 town. Tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 is where we think we can compete. Uh, what we do have is certain products which may be different from uh, some of the competition. And I would not like to spell out all the detail on the products because then we're giving away our competitive edge. Right. Uh, and how, and how, you, um, how you assist the customer, I think tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 towns is more about uh, you know how you assist the customer. Customer service, while it's a very simple word to say, 
is very difficult to execute. So, you know, there has to be a certain differentiation, which we feel we've done a decent job in, in, in the customer experience given to this customer. And, and how quickly you can provide assistance to the customer as well. You have to also, uh, you know, ensure uh, there's in the gold product, especially this quick disbursement and quick redemption ability as well for the customer. In uh, the business loan product, which is the collateral free business loan product, there's a lot of documentation that is required. So how you can assist the customer in that and how you can make their life easier so that they can continue with their day-to-day -day business while they, all, while they still try to take a loan. I think that is the most important differentiating factor for us. Okay, so understood. Yeah, that's, that was all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchdown telephone. The next question is from the line of Ankur Gulati, an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. I don't want uh, two questions. Why is the effective tax rate 40 percent plus this quarter? So the tax rate keeps moving around from quarter to quarter. It's a, uh, a very um, complicated issue. But what we what happens with us is uh, in finance costs, there's roughly about a 1.7 to 2 crore expense every quarter for us, which is a non-cash expense due to the corporate guarantee that is given by the hold co Wilson Holdings to our lenders. Um, now, because of this, there's a difference between the cash tax paid and the actual uh, tax that has to be paid. And that's the reason why the tax rate moves from quarter to quarter. I think it'll be fair to say that on a yearly basis, it will be between 25 to 30 percent, and one should look at it that way. Second question, um, just help us understand, in the last portfolio, if you're getting a gross yield of hypothetically 20 percent from the borrower, Mm. How is that split between uh, TrueCap and the co-lender in your p and I mean, does the 20% entirely come to your interest income and then you pay out something to co-lender or how does it work from accounting perspective? Yeah, so you use a number of 20% or 20% is a high number to the borrower uh, overall for the entire last portfolio because... Uh, the idea behind co-lending is, is to assist the borrower and being able to give them loans at a fairly reasonable rate as well. So that was the concept behind co-lending in the first place. But assuming it's 20% just to stay with the, that number, there's a fixed hurdle rate that is provided to the last partner. <coughs> so beyond the fixed hurdle rate, whatever that rate may be, if the 20% is the rate you're charging the customer, the difference between the hurdle rate and the 20% on their 80% is what we keep uh, for all the services that are provided, which is basically sourcing the customer, servicing the customer, and collecting on the customer as well. Um, so, and this is a mammoth effort, right, from sourcing to collection. So, there's uh, uh, that's why there's that fixed hurdle rate that is provided to the co to the last partner while we keep the balance. And on our 20% capital contribution, we keep the entire yield. There is a split between interest income and non-interest income because there's also processing fee and there are certain other charges that get split uh, accordingly. So uh, that's the answer to your question. Also on the BC relationship, so with Shivalik Small Finance Bank, for instance, the BC partnership where they uh, fund 100% on their books, we do the sourcing, servicing and collection. There, all of it gets booked in, in uh, non-interest income. So out of 20, if hurdle is 15, on 80%, 15 goes to co-lender, correct? And that correct. doesn't form part of your interest income. Correct. Correct. 5% on their 80 is part of your interest income or other income? No, that is part of our other income, but there's PF and there are other charges, for example, whether it's penal, whether there's insurance income, etc. All of that will go into non-interest income. Understood. And um, any updates on credit rating now or timelines for credit rating upgrade post the fund rate? So, I mean, we are triple B plus rated with Infomerix. We have a triple B with care. We are hoping the rating agencies take cognizance of uh, not just the fact that we have uh, grown the uh, loan book in a very risk mitigated manner and taken it up from uh, March 2020 when it was 36.7 crores to over 800 crores today. And the split of the book ha has become a lot safer where gross NPS have gone down from 
almost 5% at that time to about 1.1%. We're, we're hoping the rating agencies take cognizance of the fact and look at uh, and, and look to see what they can do with our rating. I can't give you specifics on timing. Obviously, that is up to the rating agencies. But hopefully, with equity, new equity coming in as well, uh, our debt to equity going down from 2x to 1.2x, that should have a positive impact, hopefully. Okay, so for this quarter, your interest expense is 182 million. Okay. If I take it as average of last two quarter borrowing, it comes to 16.4 annualized. Uh, out of which you're saying 18 crores, 1.7 is two promoter. If I knock that off, your borrowing cost is still 15%. So this 15, uh, is that a fair number? No, that is not a fair. Like I mentioned to you, there's that uh, non-cash expense, right, which moves around from quarter to quarter depending on the amount of debt that you raise in the quarter. Incrementally, we raised money at 12.4% in the second quarter. It was slightly lower in the first quarter, which is closer to about 11.9% in the first quarter. And I mentioned that in my remarks as well, that the a uh, sharp decline that we saw in the first quarter was not replicated in the second quarter. Second quarter, it was uh, actually up a little bit, and that is, I think, the rate environment globally and not just in uh, India. So uh, incrementally 12.4, our total cost of funds today are about 12.9%, uh, which has gone up from 11.9% uh, 12 months ago. And the reason for that is the rate hikes got passed on to us. Our endeavor is to bring this down by about 100 to 150 basis points. Uh, over the course of the next 18 months. So, no, just help me understand 12.9 on current borrowing of, I think, 470. I'm very happy to take that with you offline, Uncle. We can run you through the whole math line by line, no problem at all. I think it would be more appropriate if we take that offline. Credit rating, if there is an upgrade, what, 100, 100 plus basis no, points? So, if whatever happens if you have a credit rating, whenever that does happen, that again is dependent entirely on the rating agencies, how they. Uh, look at how safe of an entity we are now going forward, given the fact that our net worth should be closer to about 400 crores. Um, and we've done four rounds of equity infusion now with this one over the last four years. Uh, incrementally, the funding cost will go down. It's not that it will go down on the entire back book, but incremental funding costs should go down. Uh, the difference between a triple B plus and a triple B rated entity, for example, uh, the difference would be close to about 100 to 120 basis points on incremental funding. Obviously, if you go into the A minus rating, whenever that does happen over a period of time, then the difference becomes much larger because a lot more banks can fund you much larger amounts once you break into the A family. Okay, fine. All right, thanks. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Participants, if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Wish everyone a very happy and prosperous Dhanteras and happy Diwali. Uh, look forward to talking to you all on the next call. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of True Cap Finance Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.